Hi my artsy friend, welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about the content of this beautiful book, The Color Bible. I am so attracted to color and this is something that it's a must have if you also, like me, attracted to color, their meaning and their history. Let's start. The Color Bible is a handbook for navigating the fascinating world of color. Inside, you can find history of color, color theory, color will, psychology of color. But more than that, you can find 100 different color and explore their importance and role in the world around us from industrial area to social media i am going to share with you the most important bits and pieces that i could grasp from this book but there is so much more that need to be explored and it's up to you if you want to explore more the link is down in the description as the book states we see different colors as human because different objects absorb or reflect different wavelengths of light. Humans are trichromats, meaning our eyes have three cones that interpret color for red, one for blue, one for green. With the potential to distinguish a million of different colors. This book takes you all the way back to Aristotle to elaborate color theory. Aristotle developed what is thought of as a linear color scale from white at midday to black at midnight. And then you continue with Isaac Newton where its work established the relationship between the color and wavelengths of light. Identifies seven distinct color in a visible light spectrum, which are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. It's so fascinating to know all the history of the color theory, but it's also fascinating to learn what the book uh, differentiates as a, a subtractive color system and an addictive color system. The addictive color system work with immaterial color or light, and it refer to the red, green and blue while the subtractive color method work with material color such as a paint and ink and not light or immaterial and is the cyan magenta and yellow I love to learn a little bit about the color wheel that first was introduced in the 17th century and is one of the most useful tools to understand the color relationship. I had the chance to learn more in detail everything from primary color, secondary color, tertiary color, monochromatic, analog, complementary, split, complementary or compound. And there is so much more. Dyed, triad, tetrad, the cool and warm color. Honestly, it is a plethora of things to learn. To be honest, I quickly move to what interests me the most, and that is the psychology of color. The psychology of color works on the principle that the impact the color has on us goes beyond aesthetic. The different colors have this 
distinct effect that influences sensory, emotional and physical responses. And the term sensorial association is used to describe the mental connection we may have with a particular shade. The book analyzes a big group of color and then each big group of color is differentiated in a several uh, shades of the color, which is super interesting, uh, ugly recommended. It talks about a little bit of the history and the impact that has on us and as a several color that goes from the red, the orange, the yellow, green, blue, violet, and so, so much more. I want to talk about the impact that this color have on us. So let's check that. The color red. Easily accessible as a pigment, it was the first true color to be adopted into our palette alongside black and white when we began dubbing cave walls with the figure animals and human. Red has remained important to us ever since and has garnered so many associations like blood, passion, danger, anger, love, sanctity, war, the list goes on. Orange is the ultimate warm color with no cool undertones, making it a fantastic counterbalance shade for color harmonies and contrast alike. Orange is gentler than red and yellow, is a friendly color, warming and genuine. A flexible secondary hue is perfect for communicating vital information. If optimism were a you, it would be yellow. Visually stimulating and refreshing to contemplate, it combines with other colors to create a variety of moods. Interesting to know they were no completely stable yellow pigment until the 20th century. Lead, arsenic, trees up and even chemical based chrome reacted a brown in the sunlight. And this frustration for artists and designers was created was solved with the creation of synthetic alizarin and azo pigment at the end of the 19th century, leading to a plethora of stable, transparent and clean dyes and pigments. Calming, balancing and rejuvenating, green is the most restful color to look at. Pale shades pacify while darker shades create a contemplative mood. Despite its frequency in nature, for a long time green proved elusive as a pigment. Until the advent of synthetic pigments, most green were made by mixing blue and yellow because it was difficult to extract a stable and charismatic Green. In 1775, chemist Schill concocted an artificial green, quickly adopted into textile and wallpapers. Deeply connected with the natural world, blue is easy on the eye and mind. Lighter tints are expansive and serene, while darker shades are perceived as reliable and trustworthy. For many years, however, Attractive blue pigment remained rare, and so the color was reserved for rich and powerful and set aside for artists the most worthy subject and illustrious commission. A shade associated with spiritual connection, purple speaks of awareness and reflection. Light colors evoke play and creativity, while deeper shades have a distinctive, mysterious allure. Violet is also the color wavelength that is the hardest for our eyes 
to detect, making it a deeply mysterious and elusive view. It's a little bit redder, a little bit bluer, very few truly spectral violet appears in the natural world. Pinks make up a fluid, shape-shifting family, adopting many faces. Pink can be gentle and soothed, but they can also be shocking, rebellious, and powerful. The first black pigment are still in use today. The burned remains of ancient fires produced the charcoal that our ancestors used to mark the walls of caved. caves. Beloved by artists for the velvety-rich black marks it makes, today this modest medium is making waves in design now for its absorbent qualities. From brooding shadow to airy shades, grey are the support. They give depth and nuance to form. Pure white is often a starting point. We perceive it to be clean, but when you use it to greater a proportion, it can be sterile and off-putting. color of the earth, brown, represent nature and its cyclicity. Dependable and grounding, humble brown can help us feel calm and secure. I hope you guys enjoy this journey into the colors. Let me know what you think of this book down in the comment and I will see you next time. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!